Coming up in tonight's episode, Mark drinks tea, shows us how to make a rabbit wee, gets a little bit stuck in a bush, and I show everybody on camera my fantastic screwing action. <laughs> it can only be... Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now clearly in today's video we're going rabbit shooting. The kit that I'll be taking with me for tonight's episode. First of all, the rifle is my Ruger 1022, trusty uh, Ruger, this rifle. I've had it for um, seven or eight years now, and it's very, very rarely missed a beat. More recently, I have changed the ammo. I usually use the subsonic um, CCI rounds, but I've changed over to the Ely match ammo. This is a 40 grain flat nose bullet, travels slightly faster than the CCI round, so it is a little louder. Uh, but what you lose in uh, sound suppression, you gain in accuracy. It groups incredibly well for an automatic um, LR rifle, this, um, especially with those bullets. So those are the rounds I'll be using. Um, it will be moderated by the SAC mod. This is a relatively cheap and inexpensive moderator to get for rim fires. You can use those for 2.2 LRs, and I've also got one on my um, Lithgow 17 HMR as well, so it's a great silencer. That. The glass that's on top is the Hawk Sidewinder. This model is the 3x12x50. Again, on a rimfire rifle, you don't tend to be shooting much past 90 um, yards, so therefore you don't need a great big magnification scope. But it is a very good scope, this um, incidentally, for using with night vision add-ons, as well as it's got very good clarity in the daytime as well. On the scope, I put a couple of breakaway coasters around the zoom ring and on the parallax. That aids uh, with zooming in and focusing the picture to keep the picture nice and clear if I'm recording. Um, though, those are a very inexpensive add-on and they're also available in the Team Fox at Amazon shop. I'll put a link um, to that in the video's description. The night vision kit itself is the Night Sight Wolf Artec unit. I've had that system since its launch back in 2016. And if you saw uh, my last video there, you would see that actually Night Sight have uh, gone into liquidation now. So sad news, but I'm going to keep using that kit um, until such times as I will probably end up putting something like an ATN scope on more of my rifles. Spotting the quarry tonight will come in the form of the amazing Pulsar Accolade XP50 thermal binoculars. Um, yes, they're expensive, but boy, once you've had something of that nature, there is no way you can go back to just flicking um, a lamp around. Nothing gets away from them. Even better than that, they've got the built-in laser rangefinder, so you can ping your target and get an exact reading. Knowing full well where my rifle shoots at both 63 yards, 75 or below, I know how much hold over or hold under uh, I need to put on that rabbit to give it a nice swift kill. I never go out at night time now without a couple of decent torches, so I always have my Olight um, head torch. And then I'm also using the Seeker 2 Pro, um, which is a stupidly bright, very powerful torch, so great for seeking out what you've just shot. And last but not least, my trusty Primos trigger sticks with my new um, Nate Vision Limited Edition Team Foxer clamp that sits on top of that. That holds my rifle nice and steady if I'm in a static position to be able to hold my accolade with two hands. You can use one, but I find focusing and, and then range finding all with one hand very difficult indeed. So therefore those sticks um, holding the rifle nice and steady for me um, offer the ability for me to be able to keep both hands free. Well there you go, that's a brief rundown of the kit. We've just got to wait for it to get a little bit darker before we head over to the Carolina Park to see if we can rid it of these pesky rabbits. I'll catch you in a bit. So, as we arrive at the caravan park on what would be an incredibly still evening, Mark puts the finishing touches to his Ruger precision rifle, uh, also chambered in .22 LR, and gets Doris, our trusty trolley out, ready for action. We barely go rabbiting without that these days. If you've got a permission that's got a fair amount of walking involved, one of those trolleys is a great way of carrying a good number of rabbits from point A to point B. One of the other good additional bits of kit I like to use is the PBIRL. I use this laser a lot on my foxing setup, but it's also good when out rabbiting if you want to be able to spot quarry from some good distance away. The last thing I need to do is simply fill up the 10 shot magazine and this is what makes in my opinion this setup so good um, is the auto loading capacity here. Great for follow up shots or it's also good if you need to take more than one rabbit in quick succession as we will hopefully see very soon. Thank you. 
So we make our way towards the back of the caravan park as we can see a muntjac and some rabbits here at around 100 yards, the closest rabbit being around 60 yards. Coming up on the channel, I go in search of a chicken killer thief, uh, fox, and it's again tricky wet conditions. We do it track and trace, Team Fox a star. So stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed to see how that session goes. back to the rabbiting action and Mark's up first. He decides he wants to try and stalking a little bit closer because his zero point is a little bit closer than mine as he very gingerly walks across the gravel pathway at the caravan park. A couple of minutes later and Mark's in position. What he hadn't seen though of which I witnessed using the thermal, the rabbits had bolted just into the cover behind these trees here. He was able to pick out a little bit of eye shine and he took aim and took a shot at this one here but missed it which was kind of strange because it was pretty much bang on his zero point. I get myself set up for this rabbit here. I range it at 57 yards, I'm sighted in at 62 so I shouldn't need to do any kind of hold over or hold under for this one. I did, however, have to thread the needle through all of those branches, and as you can see, we were able to bag the first bunny, and that would kind of set the tone for the rest of the session in this particular paddock, with the rabbits keeping back, feeling safe, undercover, and me threading a few bullets straight through all of these twigs. With not a breath of wind, and now a damp mist starting to form in the air, the thermal picture was starting to look a little bit hazy. However, as we rounded the bank, just over the brow of that hill, there were some rabbits sat neatly just a little bit further than the last on the opposite bank. As we rounded the bank further, as you can see here, there are four rabbits very visible through the thermal, even though it is a little hazy. But as you switch the night sight on, you can only clearly see two of them. And that's because they're looking in our direction and you've got the eye shine. Without that eye shine, and this is where thermal really comes into, it, into its own, without the eye shine, it's hard to spot things just using NV. This one, though, at 21 yards, actually needs a little bit of hold over. And I bowl this one over an absolute treat. No adjustment needed on the second one there because that was pretty much bang on my zero point. The third rabbit here though ran a little bit further back into the bush. So as soon as I bowled this one over, Mark very kindly volunteered to go and pick it out. I bet he wish he hadn't bothered now because it was a good six feet deep into this hawthorn bush. Little haul off this one little field. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah I like it. No, Dolly's given up the ghost. <laughs> it's fairly tricky conditions. It's a little bit raining. You might be able to tell look, looking at the atmosphere, which means the thermal's not brilliant. But these all look like pretty good sized rabbits. So Mark's just Please. emptying the Mark's just emptying the bladders of the rabbits. Um, when the game dealers take them in, they don't actually want them paunched. However, these rabbits will be going um, to ourselves, so we will be skinning and gutting these in a little while, but we'll just empty the bladders out because I don't want to get me dolly trolley full of wee. And the reason we bring that is because once you've got five or six rabbits in your hand, they get quite weighty. 
Yes, they do. And that saves saves the muscles. Well, that has been drinking far too much. Yeah, a bit like my missus. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine off this field. And I don't think we had one get away. No. So look at that. Nine healthy Good rabbits, that. Good little start. Plus we've had two or three on the other field that we need yep. to go and retrieve, but we'll let that area settle down and go back and hopefully we can bag a few more. But before we do that, Mark needs to have a quick look at his rival because he's new Ruger Precision. He came here with his son a few days ago and had a couple of rabbits um, and it was bob on, but all of a sudden uh, he's missed um, some easy shots. So we need to make sure he's not banged it um, and done anything like that. So we're gonna... Or I'm just not a good shot. Oh, I don't think it's that, mate. I think what we'll do is we'll get these in the uh, dolly trolley, go back to the car and... Uh, Get a target up and have a few rounds with that. Okay, good to see what's happening. Indeed, but so far so good. So, Bosch of rabbits in the truck, and it might only be two degrees, but I've got a sweat on, so I'll take my jacket off for a little while. We we'll have a quick tea break while uh, we we'll have a look at getting Mark's gun sorted out. Mm. So, uh, as you say, two to LR, my nemesis. <laughs> Yeah, Mark's not had the best of luck with his 2.2 LR rifles. This one, however, though, is a really cracking rifle. All he needed to do was put a couple of rounds into a box, um, re-zeroed it, and the rifle was then shooting back on song. Right, so it's Mark's turn to bag a few bunnies. If he can just navigate the bushes and the electrical boxes in the caravan park, he gets himself in position with some rabbits just to his right. These rabbits are around 55 yards from his shooting location. I stayed back and observed it through the thermal and tried to film him using the camcorder. I put my IR on the rabbit so that I could get a shot uh, from my point of view for you guys, but my IR was drowning out Mark's picture. The camcorder is not quite as sensitive um, as the night sight, but nevertheless, he bowled it over an absolute treat. I think he's now got a little bit of confidence back in his rifle. So as Mark picks that one up and goes back for his rifle, I spin round and notice a couple of rabbits had come out relatively close. Once again, the auto-loading Ruger there, not having to worry about cycling the bolt. You're simply ready for that next shot straight away. Well, we've reached the end of the session. A very difficult evening. Not a breath of wind. You could hear a pin drop. Um, and the rabbits were very wary. As you might be able to tell, there's quite a lot of wet mist as well in the air, so you can see the guns are getting nice and wet. Um, so it really isn't ideal conditions. We have managed to shoot and pick up 14, so we picked up everything we've shot, so that's really good. As you may be able to tell, it was also very difficult with the thermal as well. The wet weather makes everything the same sort of temperature. You are able to still pick out the odd heat source, uh, but again, with the conditions that we've had, uh, problems that Mark's had with his rifle, we have had better evenings. Nevertheless, the outcome is still a relatively good one and we've been able to clear several rabbits off of the paddocks here at the caravan park. Thank you very much for watching, take care, stay safe and as always, happy shooting.